Hi guys, so I'm coming to you for my craft room today and before we get started um, beading, I wanted to show you something that I've made um, off camera using the bargain bead box. Um, as you can see, I used the um, Tree of Life pendant, the, the rose quartz, and I made this necklace and right now it just looks like a really long necklace, two tiers on the bottom, one tier on the top with some different coloring. So if you look, this one's pr more purple and this one has like various colors and I'll show it to you on the um, showcase. But I wanted to show you how this works. So it's magnetically, it's got magnetic clasps and yes, you can wear it like that. And let me get it on so I'm not getting my hair in it. Um, you can wear it so that you've got the long, the really long necklace and I keep pulling on it too hard here. There we go. So I've got my nice long necklace, um, two tiers. If I take it off, take off the, the magnetic clasp, I can wear the two tiers up closer and have this little extender to be a bracelet. So that's two ways to wear this. Another way to wear it is if you make it long, I can wear it as a single length. And then I can take the little short chain here, find the magnetic clasp and the right side because there's a north and a south. And I can wear it having, you know, a very short tier and a very long tier like this. I could also take this if I wanted to make a tie-like effect, like a bolo. I could do that and have a really unique necklace. Um, so yeah, so this is this is a multi-wear necklace that I created, and we are going to be making something similar to this using some more stuff from the bargain bead box and some magnetic clasps. So I'm going to flip the camera around and we're going to get started. All right, guys. So um, my workspace is a mess and I'm going to show you this up close just to show you what it looks like up close and let me get it together here. So we've got this bracelet part which is mostly the purples and the greens um, can be worn by itself and then the necklace has um, you know a lot of the different beads. Let's see if I can get this to focus here. A lot of the different beads and um, it's really very pretty and it's very it's boho themed um, florally I, I think of this a, like a garden rom like a garden romancy type I know it's called you know the it's called blooming trees but this just reminds me not just of blooming trees but of like spring it's just a fun spring necklace um, and so we're going to be doing that, and I thought we could do something slightly different than what I did there. I wanted to use this Tree of Life pendant and the chain, so I did cut a 21-inch chain here because I do want this quite long so that it can be a necklace on its own or it can be, um, it can be part of the, um, the collection of multiples. So I'm going to grab some jump rings here. I'm going to grab some smaller jump rings so that we can get um, jump rings on that chain. And what I'm going to do on the chain is I am going to put um, two lobster claws on either side. So that's that way it can be attached or detached from the beaded because I want this to be able to be completely separate or um, and this is going to be the pain because there are tiny 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 little um, holes and I don't know if this there we oop it started to go through and then so you're gonna have to I mean this chain this this chimera chain or whatever it's called is really tiny so um yeah you're gonna have to be careful with 
you know, using it because trying to get jump rings into that tiny of a hole. Um, and I don't like that. I think that was the piece I cut. So I am going to take that piece off because I don't like it. Um, and so... I'm just doing this to get it started and then we're going to design the, and see that's really tight on there, um, which is good and bad because it's good that it'll stay on, but it's also bad because you don't want it to get stuck in a spot. All right, so that's the necklace portion that I wanted is started. So now I need something to be about 18 inches, so the next set for the necklace is going to be about 18 inches. So let's design this out together. And as you can see, I don't have a ton of beads left um, from making the first one. So we're going to have to be very careful on how we do this because um, otherwise we're not going to have enough beads. So I am going to grab probably, because we're also going to need to make the bracelet. And so what I was thinking is I do have some chain left and so maybe we'll do little bits and then some chain and little bits and then some chain and do um you know do a chain style um because I can then use up this chain so I'm thinking I want to do some purples and maybe we'll do for a focal we'll do Purple, purple, dark purple, some green, and maybe we'll do three, maybe we'll do the three purples, those separated, we'll put those on there next to the purple and then we'll do three pinks right with those um or nope that's two i think that's two hmm. i'm thinking maybe we do there we go We'll do that. And then um, two greens and a yellow. I think that'll work and that will give us with chain in between that will give us, and I'm debating whether I want to use the the wire or if I want to use head pins or eye pins. Um, if my eye pins are long enough to do it, I may use eye pins um, just because um, they may work just a little bit better. And that's not that big, so that will work and you can bend those so that they will, I think I like that. And I'm gonna use my looper because we are just going to loop these. And there's one. So I'm gonna get these made because then this is going to be, and I've got, those are really long eye pins for just those little bits of beads. So I'm going to do the bigger ones first and then see if I have. Smaller ones in the same metal. And see, I like that. That's cute. Um, 
Now keep in mind, we need to make sure that these this becomes about 19, 18, 19 inches. Um, just because it's going to be shorter than the, the pendant, but it still needs to be long enough that um, we can do um, the attachment. And this is going to be our main necklace. This here is going to be the main one that has the magnetic on it. And that one didn't cut. And see, I hate that my loopers are not, um, they don't always work. And so I've had them for a while. And um, for whatever reason, they've decided that um, they're not going to be sharp anymore. So... Just trying to get a loop on that and see if I can loop that and make it round. That's pretty good. All right, so we've got our three big ones. Now we need to do the little ones or the littler ones. I'm going to see if I have any more of those um, in smaller. And... I do, but they're not, they're not long enough. All right, so we're just going to have to use these, and that's fine. Whoops. Um, bunny fur. That, that was bunny fur. So there's, I was, um, reorganizing some things when I redid the craft room and found out that I had bunny fur in some of my stuff. And yes, when you have bunnies, you have fur everywhere. And see, I don't get why the loopers don't. Um, and so this being this long, I will keep this because I can make a little loop on that end, put a single bead and a little loop. So you don't have to throw away the waste. Let me get the fur out of here. See, bunny fur. Woo. And then when I put all these back in the bag, maybe there'll be less bunny fur. Um... So anyways, um, I've decided that um, while I love doing the bargain bead boxes and everything, I want to focus more on the shibori and the, the unique jewelry. So you're going to be seeing a lot more of this kind of style, um, wire wrapping, um, and the shibori. So, you know, if you like that, um, let me know. You know, because doing, doing basic stuff like, you know, stringing on beads and, and everything, while I can give you ideas on how to use your boxes, that's great. I want to show you, you know, unique things that you can make because, you know, like this multi-wear necklace that I created, um, you can wear it multiple ways. So I can see, you know, hey, I'm going to work in the office and I like the bracelet and I'm going to be going out after work. So I want to wear the bracelet, but I work on computers. So I don't want that bracelet hitting my wrist all day long. I could throw it around my neck, wear it as part of the necklace. And then at the end of the work day, when I'm done, change up my necklace, which changes up my look. And suddenly now I have um, a completely new look. Um, and so, I mean, that's, that's something that now you've get, you get multiple uses, multiple, um, you know, ways to wear it. All right, so now we've got purple, that. And actually, I think I want to do that, maybe. No. I'm just trying to think here because what I don't want to do is have too much purple and then no purple up here. So I'm thinking we're going to need to do another set at least and do maybe green, purple, green. 
no, I may want that for the bracelet portion. All right, so I need to figure out how long of a length I want um, on these, and this is going to be really hard to, to measure and cut to get in between. So what I think I'm going to do is rather than um, measure lengths, I'm just going to measure, and I'm thinking... So let's say one, two, three, four, five, six. If I do six, one inch here. So I'm going to set it at the one inch mark on here. Hold it down. Figure out what. My, where my mark is. And just cut it there. So there's one. And again, you've got that half one there that I just cut. I'm not going to use, so that's not going to count as part of my one inch. I see that right there. So there's two. Velvet! She's being a pain right now. She's digging at carpet, which she should not be. Um, everybody's, it's springtime. Everybody's rambunctious. Um, Bella thankfully has gotten out of her stasis, so she's back to being her normal self, thank God. Um, two, three weeks of, of illness. So there's three. There's four. And like I said, this chain is tiny. So, um... There's five. Oof. And it's a pain because it doesn't want to stay where it's supposed to. And there's six. All right, so we've got six now. Now the little trick is, um, and again, as you can see, I'm going to bring this up to the camera, see if I can get this in focus. Oops. There we go. Yeah, this, this is tiny, and those links, there's, they're really tiny. So, um, when you cut them, they leave a piece but it's not a full piece. Ooh. And um, so I don't want the full piece to be, or the half piece to be on there. So I'm going to have to take the half pieces off um, before I put, I attach them to anything. So there's just the half piece. And... To be honest, I can just start trimming away, and then that should just fall off. All right, so that side fell off, and that side's a full side. So what we're going to do is we're just going to have to try to hook 
onto the loops that um, so all I'm doing is trying to get it there we go onto the loop and then I'm going to close up that loop like that and so now we can do the other side Again, one side's going to have a half if it doesn't fall off. Like, see there, right there, you can see the half. And while I probably could use that half, um, I don't want to take the chance that it's going to come out. Um, because this is such delicate chain, I don't want to run the risk of things falling apart. So we're just going to put it on this side and I'm going to start building out from the center um, I'm building from the center out all right we'll try this side maybe this side will be easier um, and like I said this is going to be it's going to be tricky getting this chain on if you're you're playing with this chain if you got this month's bead box they're tiny it's tiny little chain um which is why i'm using my tweezer nose here just because um it's easier to get in all right so there's that piece now we can start adding to the center And I don't know if you can hear that, but I've got a bunny chewing at carpet. There you go, baby. Oh. There we go. That part's on. So this one's going to be dainty and delicate. Um compared to the other one that was, um, you know, lots and lots of beads. Um, all right, and that's got a little space. Can we get that? We can't get that in there. So I'm noticing that with this, you need to have a lot of open room on your head pin or your eye pin to get these on um i know you can't see this my fat fingers are, are in the way but i'm literally just taking that little tiny loop this little tiny space right at the tip and trying to get that to slide onto um my head pins And see, this one's just not wanting to cooperate. Let's try it this way. There we go. And if you can't get it from one direction, try the other direction because these are a little bit twisted. Um, so maybe if one side's not. All right, so that's looking cute. Now we're going to need to attach another chain. And this side's got the half. See, some of them, the half came off on, on some, and other ones, it didn't. So, I guess it just depends on the way it, it cut. So, I just cut that half piece off. Um, also, one of the things we're going to be doing here in the near future, and... Um, I'm kind of excited to try it is I've never done a tree of life. You know, this kind of inspired me to try it. Um, wire wrapped tree of life. So I bought some cabochons. They're 30 by 40. I got a Howlite and 
a rose quartz. And one of the things I want to try to do for you guys is do a Tree of Life pendant where um, instead of doing just plain copper wire, I'm going to be doing um, I'm going to be doing a rainbow colored. So I bought red, orange, and we've got gold for for yellow, uh, green, blue, and purple um, coated wires, and then I bought black. Um, I bought black base wire. So it's black coated base, black coated copper. And so what I want to do is I want to make a pendant that is going to be um, a tree of life, but the tree of life is going to be rainbow. So I'm not going to be adding any beads to the tree of life. So I know there's like trees of life out there where everybody puts like the, the chips, the chip beads and everything. I'm not going to do that. This one's just going to be the wires but it's going to be rainbow and then I'm going to embellish using like either coils or woven um, rainbow um, items. Now that's looking quite nice. I really like that. So now we need to get the next one attached. Um, and so as you can see, I've had my measuring tape. I've you know, I've got that out because instead of measuring it on this, I've actually been measuring it on the measuring tape to make sure that I have it at the right length. Um, because you want one 21 inches in order to do this, you're going to want one that's about 21 inches long, one that's, um, 18 or 19 inches and then you're going to want the bracelet to be roughly seven seven and a half um, and now you can do multiples you could do three like if I had more of this chain I would do a 21 inch with the pendant I would do a 19 inch with this here right and then I would do a maybe a 17 inch additional chain with, you know, something on it. Um, you know, if I had more of this chain, I might like, again, but the beauty of this is, is if I decide later on, you know, I make the two and then decide later on that, Hey, I want a third with a, you know, adding a chain to it. I could get some more of this chain from a bargain bead box and um and then go ahead and create an additional because as long as it's not the same length as what's already there you can add as mult as many as many components as you like so i could make a five tier necklace um just by adding in um so you've got so like on this one, I've got the jump rings. If I wanted to, I could do lobster claw clips and add additional um additional things to the lobster claw. Um so you so it's you know, it's the possibilities are endless. And so what you could do if you were, you know, one of the things I'm going to start doing is with when I'm selling stuff is okay, so I have um you know, the necklace and the, and, and I can sell pieces and say, Hey, we, you know, here's your multi, your multi-tiered necklace. You pick out the components to make up the necklace, you know, so you can make your own. So if I have, you know, this and, you know, the additional tier, and I'll show you what I mean. And when I get done with this chain, I'll show you what I'm talking about because these are all going to be clips that can be clipped on so it's it's a build your own essentially um you know design your own components and then you can mix and match and make a boho look you can make an elegant look um 
But again, this is something that you're going to have, what, five different ways to wear it, six different ways to wear it. Um, additionally, you know, if you get the right, the right um, colors, you can wear it spring, summer, winter. You know, if you were to do one that was just you know, silver gold, and that half piece fell off of that. That was pretty cool. Um, you know, if I were to do something that was, you know, silver, gold, um, you know, uh, black, white, you know, just neutral colors, you could wear that year-round. Um, if I were to do something that was, you know, pearls, and let's say pearls and crystals and gold, you know, you could wear that also year round. It could be a wedding style. It could be, you know, so it could be for fancy, but it could also be. All right, this one's not cooperating. And this is what I mean. These are so tiny. There we go. They just don't want to go on. There. That one's in. And now I need to decide. We need to decide what we're going to do with this last portion. Are we going to make it chain? Are we going to make it beads? Um, Cause again, I still need to make the bracelet portion or the seven inch. There we go. I still need to make the seven inch portion and I haven't decided what the seven inch portion is going to look like yet. Now you don't have to make it seven inches. You can make it longer. So I could make, you know, something that would maybe wrap around twice. Um, you know, I could definitely do that. Um, for now, I'm just going to make a single bracelet on this one. All right. So we need to measure what we're at right now and I am at 12 inches so I need another five inches and I'm thinking um, because I want you know I want it to hang nicely I think we're gonna add another component set and I think maybe if I have enough I'm going to do, yep, I have enough. I'm going to do another set of these crystals here, up here, and that should get me just what I need for components. All right, so I'm going to pause you so you don't have to watch me struggle with this wire. I'm going to pause you, and once I get these components built and added on, I will be right back. All right, guys, so I added in my components and we are, and I added a, one piece of chain at the end of each side. Um, and we are at roughly a little over 17 inches, which is fine. Because by the time we get jump rings and um, clasps on, it will be about 18 inches. So now we need to decide, do we put the magnetic on this and the clasps on this or do we put the magnetic on this and so I'm going to first bef before I decide that we're going to do the bracelet so I need a seven inch bracelet and I am going to take some um, beading wire here and I'm going to put a bead stopper on it because I am going to make um, 
a very beaded one because this is also going to be um and i'm debating if we want to do a one that can wrap so like this is 17 inches it can wrap around several times um to make a bracelet but i'm thinking for now we're going to just do the one and i'm thinking because we have um this pattern i was thinking doing a pattern like this um for the center and doing maybe a big crystal no um let's see and then doing three purples or two purples on either side let's do two purples on either side um and actually we're going to put a spacer bead there and a spacer bead there and do green green um green green purple or green purple green and then two of those on either side and then do a purple or actually let's do another green let's do three yellows and a green and then a purple three yellows a green and then a purple and that should get me that should get me about seven inches if not i'm thinking maybe what we do is we put three in there i think we'll do that i think that should get me what i need so what i'm going to do is i'm going to start stringing it on and see what um how long it is and again, this is going to be on the back of the neck, but um, keep in mind that it can also be on the front when we're doing um, and I like that. I think I'm going to modify this pattern just a little bit and add a green in there and then a spacer bead the purple a spacer bead right and do that and then do skipping the green and then doing the And only I'm only doing that because I was looking at it here and looking at the way it looked. I wanted to make sure that it is a uniform design. Um, and again, I'm going to have to make sure I don't go over seven inches here or too much over seven inches because otherwise it's going to be a very long bracelet and we would have to modify the pattern to accommodate um, wrapping it multiple times and I don't necessarily want to wrap it multiple times. So, I mean, we did get rid of one bead in lieu of another um, and added a couple beads. So again, I'm going to see what this looks like and I can always take off, um, you know, something in the center, I can take off something on the outer edge I can reduce the number of yellow beads or if I want to do a double wrap we can always add in um, more beads and all right and so I'm just going to test this around the wrist and actually, that's kind of short. So I can add in, I think what I want to add in is by this purple. I think I do want to add in um, the green, the purple, and then the green, and then do my 
pattern. I don't know if that's going to add too much to it. That may add too much to it. That may be too, too big. So we're going to try it on this side first. And again, if I have to, I will add additional, I'll make it a double wrap and we'll add additional because then I can make a three tier necklace or a two tier or a one tier on this um, by doing the double wrap. And I will show you, I'll show you how to do that here when we, all right, so now that still needs a ways to go, so that's good. So that means that that's not too long to do a single, so I don't have to do a double wrap. And I need a wire protector here. Um, these things, you can get them on Amazon. I love them. They're great for when you're beading and you, um, you know, you're, you're doing designs like this where you're going back and forth and you don't want to lose And we've used a good bit of the beads here in the bargain bead box. Um, I still have all these little ones left. I haven't decided what to do with those. Um, I may make bracelets with those. I may make, I may just save those for um, doing another pair of Shibori earrings or something. Um, or make another component um, that can be attached to either one of these using a lobster claw. I might just do that. All right, let's see if this is long enough and it could stand to use another, so we're gonna put another spacer bead on and I think I'm trying to see what we have left. I don't want something big, but I want something. So maybe what we do is we put a bicone and a couple of these little peach beads. on either side, because that should get me exactly what I need for length, um, minus my magnetic clasps. Those things stick to everything. Um, that is the one downside to using magnetic clasps is they like to stick to everything, but if you yank on them too hard, they will, you know, they will come off, they'll come apart. Although that's also good if you have babies, because if you, you know, have a nice necklace and, you know, you're wearing it and you've got the magnetic clasp. If baby pulls on it, it's not going to, um, it's not going to break. All right, I'm going to measure this. I just want to make sure that it is going to go around my wrist. Um, and I just got snagged on some thread here. I'm just going to cut. Um, so I have some scrap threads off to the side um, from doing... The shibori, like I said, I need to clean up my craft room. All right, so that is a little bit longer than I want, but that's fine. It'll just be a long bracelet. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I am going to grab some crimp covers. And I'm using crimp covers for these because, again, if this is going to be showing at any point, I don't want my crimp beads to be seen. Um, so I'm using these clamshell crimp covers and crimp tubes um, just because they're a little sturdier and I'm using because I'm using um, a lot of beads and this is going to get a lot of wear and tear I'm using the 19 strand beadalon 
um, just because it's a little sturdier and I don't want this to break. So um, that being said, I've got my crimp bead on there. I am just going to crimp this at the end on this side because the first side really doesn't matter. And I'm just going to crimp it as close to the top as I can. And then what I do is I like to hold on to it and see if I can pull it off. And that, it slipped, but it, like the pliers slipped, but that didn't come off. Um, I also will add, as always, um, E6000 just because I like my extra security on this. Um, and then I'm just going to close this. And that's as simple as, as it is to crimp on the first side. And then I just slide everything down. I'm going to pick up another clamshell. And another crimp tube here. So sorry if I'm off camera. I was trying to see. Um, doing a crimp tube. And then this, I'm just going to pull this down as close as I can. This is kind of tight, but not super tight. And then I'm just going to take my um, tweezer nose pliers. And that crimp bead is in there. And this can be a pain. If you need to open up your clam a little more, you can. And I'm just going to crimp with the tweezers. Give it a good squeeze. Hold on to that. Not super tight. Give it a good pull to see if I can slide it. And I can't. Um, so I think we're good. And then... You just need to make sure when you're cutting, you don't cut off the um, you don't cut off your crimp. And then again, I'm just adding some glue in there, closing that up, and we have that done. So now we've got the back part or the the back part of the necklace or the um an attachment in the front i am going to get some jump rings here i've got some smaller jump rings um i'm going to add to the necklace and so we're going to add we've added jump rings to the pendant now i'm just going to add jump rings to the necklace and I think what I'm going to do is, once I've got this on, I'm also going to add, I think, my um, I'm going to put the clasp on this one. Um, and then the other one, we will use lobster claws to attach. And so what I'm doing is I am adding the jump ring and then I'm adding it to the same um, as that. So now I have a single necklace. Okay. And so you have your single necklace. Now I'm going to do the same thing to the, the bracelet. And so you will see here what... Um, what I'm doing in a moment. So I'm going to add a jump ring and the magnetic clasp here and a jump ring and a magnetic clasp here. That jump ring is not. There we go. Oh, I forgot to put the magnetic clasp. Huh. That would help. And so now we have a bracelet. Right. And again, you want it a little bit longer than you would if you were going to add, you know, so it's going to dangle a little bit, but that's fine. Um, and so now I have a short necklace that can be attached and it can be a long necklace and you can wear it either way. I could wear this part down, this part up. 
But now, with that being done, I am going to grab two lobster claws, um, making sure they're the same size and color here. Let me get two of them. And then on the ring, jump ring that we did on the necklace, I'm going to open those up and I'm just going to attach jump rings. I'm going to attach lobster claws to the jump ring to both of the and I will show you I will tilt up the camera and show you what I'm thinking when um, wearing these so because you've got jump rings on both of these and you've got lobster claws on both of them and getting my bunny fur fuzzies out of here you can actually, if you wanted to, clasp lobster claw to lobster claw. So now I'm going to switch the camera around and I will show you how this will all work together.